Good morning, whole community. Today we are in Matthew chapter 16. Um, it's a great chapter. <laughs> they're all, they're all, Matthew is such, I'm so happy we're in Matthew. It's such a, it's, um, I mean, each gospel is so great and I love reading each gospel. Um, so yeah, so Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Verse one. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Daily Hope. Before we get into it, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Oop, that's the wrong chapter. There you go. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to us today through your Holy Spirit, through your Holy Word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So I hope you guys are enjoying your our, our journey through Matthew and through the life of Jesus. And um, I hope you guys finished um, chapter 15. It was such a good chapter. So today we are in chapter 16. Um, the Pharisees are back <laughs> to question Jesus on anything and everything. Remember, the Pharisees and the scribes, what we read last chapter, they are exalting the, the traditions of men over the commandments of God. So verse 1 starts with this, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. <sighs> this is hilarious. He's fed 5,000. He's fed 4,000. He's cleansed the lepers. He's delivered people from demonic possession. The, the lame walk, the blind see, people, the, the mouth, the withered hand was made whole. I mean, at this point, you're going to ask Jesus from, for a sign from heaven. It's ridiculous. It's, it's actually hilarious. I love you guys. I know I said that last. I mean, I love you guys every day. But aren't we like this too, though? Like, that's what I'm thinking right now. Like, I, you know, I, I've been a Christian for 11 years now. 11 years as a Christian. I love Jesus. And I can look back at all these times that God was just good to me. All the times that God came through for me. The times that, all the things that he's blessed me with. All the things that he led me where I avoided messes and could tragedies am I the only one like has God been good to you I know he has has God saved you from really bad situations has he delivered you from bad situations has he ha has he blessed you with a great job a great wife or husband a great family he, does that make sense did he deliver you from depression or anxiety did he heal you like could you imagine David if the story went like this, where, you know, David, like he, he, he goes onto the battlefield, right? He, he's in the battlefield. He's got his slingshot. He, he's, he's got his, 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 his smooth stones, right? He's facing Goliath. And he's like, all right, Jesus. He, well, David didn't say Jesus. He says, all right, Lord, you were with me with the bear. You were with me with the lion. But I'm not sure if you're going to be with me with Goliath. I don't have a lot of time, God. So, God, can you show me a sign right now to show me that I'm going to win this? Because even though I've beat the lion and I've beat the bear, can, can you just show me a sign from heaven right now that Goliath will fall? That's not what happened. David said, I've defeated the lion, I've defeated the bear, and Goliath will be no different. Goliath will be no different church in our lives if you get sick or you have a financial situation or you or there's um or there's a um relational issue with your kids or your guys has god not been good to you if he's been faithful in the past he will be faithful in this situation amen and these Pharisees, even though they've seen all these things, they're still asking for a sign. 
And my, 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 my plead with you is don't be like a Pharisee where even though you've seen, you still ask for a sign. It's like, no, it's just let, let this be the situation where you trust God 100%. Let this be the situation, whatever it is, it's anxiety, depression, relationship, financially, whatever it is. Let this be the, the situation. Let this be your Goliath moment where you just full on jump in and you just trust God 100%. Amen. So Pharisees and Sadducees, they're testing them. They're saying, okay, what, what sign are you going to show us from heaven? In verse two, he answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the and in the morning, it will be foul weather, for the sky is red and threatened. Hypocrite, you know how to how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign shall be given to them except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, they asked for a sign. And he says, No, you guys don't deserve a sign. You guys, you guys are so hypocritical because you guys are looking for a sign from heaven. And yet, you're able to discern nature, but you can't discern spiritual things. You guys are hypocrites. You guys pay more attention to the physical, and you guys aren't paying attention to the spiritual. Because by this time, Jesus has already been fulfilling all of these prophecies, and they're choosing to not acknowledge those. I'll put it this way. Jesus, at one point, he's looking over Jerusalem, and he's lamenting. He's lamenting. Remember yesterday we were talking about Jesus having these different emotions? Jesus is looking over Jerusalem and he's lamenting. Because his heart, his desire was to gather them like a mother hen gathers her chicks. And, and here's why he's lamenting. He's like, you guys didn't know it was the time of your visitation. You guys missed it. Jerusalem has been waiting for the coming king, the coming savior, the coming Messiah. And he came and he's here and they missed it. And he's lamenting over that. And that starts with these religious leader. You know, it's the blind leading the blind. They were the, these Pharisees and Sadducees, they were the ones who were spiritual, that were supposed to be the spiritual leaders who would, who would be the ones to say, look, this 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 Jesus guy, he's fulfilling all these all these prophecies. And look at the signs of the times. This this is probably the Messiah. Look at the miracles he's doing. This is known. But instead they were they were um they were insecure and in saying, This man is taking away our disciples, this man is leading them away from us, this man is choosing these these commandments over our he's he's not following our traditions. Instead of making it about Jesus and, and, and what was happening spiritually, they stayed in the flesh and they, and they made it about them. So they leave and the disciples, they forgot bread. And then Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves saying, it is because we have taken no bread. He's like, he's saying this because we don't have any bread. And they're trying to figure out why he said this. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you, there you, go. Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took how is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? He's like, why are you guys thinking about physical bread? And why? And Jesus is saying, like, why would I be concerned? Why? Are, why would? Why do you think right now I'm concerned about bread when you've seen me multiply bread? It's not about the bread, guys. I, I'm, he's like, listen, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
what is leaven leavens what you add to bread to make it rise right and you don't need to you, you don't need to add a lot of it only a little bit will spread to the whole loaf only a little bit will spread to the entire loaf then they understood that he did not tell them to be beware, to beware of the leaven of the bread <laughs> duh <laughs> but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man? Who, oh sorry, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But, who do you say I am? He's like, those are all people that know of me. But you guys know me. So who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the king keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Oh my gosh, there's so much here. Where do I start? All right, here we go. So let, 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 let's start with this, okay? So Simon Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He's like, Peter, you got it. You got it. You know exactly who I am. Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and, and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. This is one of this is one of the scriptures that I'm going to be honest with you. This is one of the scriptures that the Catholic Church uses to say that Peter is the head of the church, that Peter is the one who started the church, that Peter is the one. You know, Peter was. I think I think they say that Peter was like their first pope, right? So the church was founded on Peter. For I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So they think, they interpret it as Jesus saying, Peter, my entire church is going to rest on you. You are the head of the church. Which doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why I snapped, but I should have clapped. It doesn't make sense. If this were true, and it's not, but if this were true, then scripture would then scripture would confirm it. Scripture would agree with it. Scripture doesn't agree with the fact that the church was built on Peter. It doesn't. Read Paul's letters. The church Christ is the head of the church. The church is the body of Christ where Christ is ahead. It doesn't say that Peter is ahead. And over and over again, Paul talks about how the church is founded on Christ. The, the, the stone that the builders rejected, that's Jesus. Right? So over and over again, we see Paul talking about how the foundations of the church is Jesus Christ and him crucified, not Peter. So, what is Jesus saying in this verse? If Jesus isn't saying that, that Jesus is going to build his church on Peter, then what is Jesus saying? I'm going to tell you. It's right here. Simon Peter Anthony said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are Christ. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. Son of the living God. What is this? This is the identity. This is who Jesus is. Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not 
reveal this to you but my father who was in heaven in other words peter has a revelation of who jesus is listen to me peter has a revelation of who jesus is i also say to you that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church what is the rock because peter isn't the rock peter's a stone cephas a stone Who's the rock? Jesus is the rock, guys. Come on. Jesus is the rock. Sorry. So what so what is Jesus saying? On this revelation I will build my church. What is the foundation of the church? That Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. So what Jesus is saying is Peter, you, you, he, he, Peter's definitely a part of it, for sure. All the disciples, all the apostles were a part of it. But Jesus is saying that on this revelation, on this revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that will be the foundation. That's where the church will be built upon, on that revelation. Amen? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he is the Christ. Anyway, so we're gonna stop right there. Oh, this next section is the next section is so good because Peter goes from being a rock star to not being a rock star, and um, we're not out of message, but we are out of time. But it's. Yeah, we don't have time for it. So, if you see if you see me later, remind me, and I'll tell you in person why it's why that part is so powerful. Where Jesus tells Peter, "Get behind me, Satan." I've always thought, like, why is that so crazy? But there's actually more to that. That um, there's actually a lot more to that when we study it contextually. So, if you want me to tell you about that, find me and I'll tell you about it. All right. And we'll talk about it. It'll be really good. So that's in Matthew chapter 16. That's later in this chapter. So actually, that's the next part of, of where we stop. So what is the revelation that the church is built upon? Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. And that, and that needs to be the foundation of us. Amen. Of, of who we are. Everything we do, Christ is at the center. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that we learned something today, God, but it won't be head knowledge, but that we will receive it in our heart, God. Help us, especially in this in these times, we recognize that these days are evil, God. And so help us to have a deeper revelation and a deeper knowing, a deeper a deeper knowing that that Jesus is God. Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the Son of the living God. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Tomorrow we will be in Matthew chapter 17, another great, great chapter. So before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m.